We should not let the differences in our systems block that type of cooperation. Now here, I think the United States has to stop thinking in terms of dominance. Ching Gan, the new Chinese ambassador to the United States, arrived in the United States and delivered a speech. He mentioned that 50 years ago, Dr. Kissinger visited China secretly and knocked on the door of China. The door to Sino-US relations has been opened and it, will be not, and it will not be closed. What do you think about Ching Gang's remarks on that? I think the visit to Beijing by Dr. Kissinger 50 years ago uh, is well worth commemorating because it illustrates that when national interest is served by cooperation, differences in political and social systems does not have to block that cooperation. The problem with differences in systems, which has become a big issue in the United States in terms of thinking about China, is that at some level, it does influence cooperation, but it shouldn't block it if it's in the national interest to cooperate. There are forces in the United States that want to block our cooperation with China because of the differences in our political systems. And we need to rethink about the Nixon-Kissinger opening to China at a time when there couldn't have been bigger differences between our domestic systems. China was in the height of the Cultural Revolution when that, that occurred. And in my judgment, if we look at what the world requires and our responsibilities as great nations, it is clear to me that the lesson of the Kissinger visit to China is when it is necessary to cooperate, to have cooperation between China and the United States, we should not let the differences in our systems block that type of cooperation. And so I think it's a very important visit. Historically, it created the possibilities for the United States and China to create enormous common interests. And those common interests, in my judgment, continue, and we have to find ways to cooperate in promoting them. I mean, there's a theory you now in the US saying, okay, China you know, doesn't converge with us. It didn't become one of us. You see, uh, the China has its own unique system and uh, uh, fighting virus, I mean, that system seems to have some uh, advantage. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly with the U.S. I'll give you a lifetime experience on China. What's your uh, take on, on the future development between China and the U.S.? I mean, from a former uh, American ambassador to China and a former China hand. You can't have a new equilibrium if either China or the United States are setting dominance as a goal because the other side will not accept it. Because you have to have a balance of power in East Asia. And otherwise we're going to be continually in strategic rivalry with each other. And that's one reason why I think it is absolutely wrong to think that our dominant factor has to be strategic rivalry because strategic rivalry always focuses on the military component and that ends up generating an endless arms race in which resources are diverted away from economic development into military development. Now here, I think the United States has to stop thinking in terms of dominance. And I think the Biden administration was wrong by introducing this concept of dealing with China from a position of strength. Anybody would understand that China would never accept that as a basis for the United States to deal with China. And that means that our national interests also have to be defined in a way that doesn't exclude that possibility. So I think there is enormous scope for China and the United States to stop looking at the world in terms of their own domestic driving factors and to understand that they have to look at the external circumstances in the world in an objective way 
and then formulate foreign policies that are compatible with the international circumstances in which they have to operate and gain the domestic support for that approach. The United States is not yet doing that. For example, if we look at East Asia, where all of the countries of East Asia have more trade with China than with the United States, it is clear that if we ask Asian countries to choose between China and the United States, they are not going to want to do so because they have very important interests with China. And so we have to understand that and our foreign policy approach to China and the way we talk about China must not be put in ways that require countries to choose between the good United States with our dem democratic system and the bad China with its authoritarian system. That's the wrong way to formulate our foreign policy concepts. Thank you.